Hey, podcaster, I'm Tim Wahlberg, your podcast performance coach, with another actionable tip so you can grow your authority and convert with ease. Today's tip is choose the right growth strategy for your podcast. What is your podcast growth strategy? Do you have one? Do you even know what one looks like? The other day in a podcast group on Facebook, I saw someone post that they got 100 downloads on their first day of releasing their show. Immediately, there were like 50 comments. Congratulations. How did you do it? Tell us your secret. That sounds amazing. What did you do? I'll tell you how the creator of that post responded to that question of how they did it in just a sec. But looking at the responses was kind of sad. All those responses reeked of desperation. People looking for any new trick or tool they can use to fast track their growth. Here's the problem with that. You need to understand that someone else's strategy is not necessarily your strategy. You need to have your own strategy for your own show and stick with it. Podcasting alone isn't a quick hit, get rich strategy. So when you see something working for someone else, don't be in a rush to abandon your plan and try theirs. They have a different show. They have a different audience. They might be starting from a different place than you. They have different metrics too. Now, I'm not saying you can't learn from what others are doing, but when I see people so obsessed with their numbers and all they care about is how do I get more listens? How do I get more downloads? That's a sign of someone who has no strategy for their show. And it might mean they don't understand what a download means when it relates to their goals. Now, for some, podcasting is a numbers game. If you have a podcast where your content is the product, then yes, growth is everything because you need and want a good size audience to sell to potential sponsors. You typically need thousands of downloads per episode for that kind of monetization. If you're podcasting for your business and using your podcast as a marketing tool, then you need a different strategy. You likely have a different goal. You might be looking to grow your authority in a particular niche. You might be a coach or a service provider. You might have products or courses for sale. This means you're looking to convert listeners into customers. So knowing your why and what your goal is for your show is really important. It will and should determine your strategy. I was working with a coach recently and they wanted to double their coaching business using their podcast. One of their metrics was 100,000 listener downloads. And I said, hey, that, you know, I I love that. It's it's huge. I love thinking big, but let's be realistic here. If you want to double your clients and you have 10 right now, all you need is 10 more clients and you've reached your goal. So she wouldn't even be able to serve 100,000 clients, even if she got them. So this is a classic mistake of quantity over quality. Because if all you're thinking about is I need to grow my audience and you grow the wrong audience, they'll never convert. They aren't potential customers. And what makes you special, what makes you an authority, all the experience and knowledge you have to offer won't matter to them. So those masses you're desperately chasing are empty leads. Chasing downloads is a vanity metric that makes you feel good. And don't get me wrong, it makes you feel really good. And it can keep you motivated. Knowing the metrics and understanding what they mean to your business is what's going to move the needle in the right direction. This is going to ring true for anyone who's done digital marketing. You know how many followers you have is not as important as how engaged they are. How many people you have on your newsletter list is not as important as how many of them open your newsletter and respond. Because for some podcasters, you can only serve so many people at once. So don't be obsessed with your downloads. Think quality over quantity. Don't play the copy and paste game or copycat game. Don't worry about what other podcasters are doing. Create a strategy with smart goals around KPIs that work for you, your podcast, 
and your business. When I say KPI, I mean key performance indicators. And that might look like leads generated, calls booked, or sales. Stay with that strategy for at least three to six months. Look at what's working and do more of that and do a little tweaking along the way. That's okay to do too. Oh, and as for that podcaster who managed 100 downloads on their first day, you know what their response was to how they did it? I don't know. I'm a total newbie. Try applying that strategy to your podcast and see if it works. So if you don't have a strategy for your podcast at this moment, start with this. Ask yourself three questions. What does a successful podcast look like to you? What is a successful podcast doing for your business? And what specific metric can I attach to it so I can measure success? And I hope that's just the tip you need. How is that strategy for your podcast looking? If you need help getting clear on what a strategy looks like for your podcast, or even if you just need me to ask you those three questions and challenge you a little on them, take me up on my free 15-minute coaching call. Or if you're just planning a show and want to start with a solid foundation, this is the work you need to do. So you're not always looking around to see what others are doing out of sheer desperation. Book your free 15-minute coaching call right now at podcastperformancecoach.com. I'm Tim Wahlberg. See